as now you don't have that option um, like i said everything's free and you're subject to the platform you're on but in the web3 world you do have ownership and you do have your login you do have your community mm -hmm. and you can take that with you on every platform so that's the beauty of it and that's where things are going to be a lot different So welcome, Donald. Um, thank you for speaking with me today. Uh, I'm here from Tech Circus just to promote the upcoming Web3 event and your talk specifically. Um, so you're the co-founder of Tomb Technologies and mm -hmm. very involved in the Web3 space. And um, you know what is it about uh, time saving and Web3 that's you know so significant? What is it that um, you know what's different to the Web 2.0 model? Yeah, so whenever we talk about the topic of time, uh, the most valuable asset that any of us will ever have in our life is time. Uh, previously, people have discussed oil and the topic switched to data, but in reality, it's our time. And uh, contrary to other assets that you obtain over your life, uh, you're most wealthy with time when you're born. And throughout your life, you have less of it. And what those who are successful on the current web understand best is the fact that they can obtain your screen time. And that's where the value is held. And the way that the internet is structured today is to benefit a few that can have control of that time and, and every user's amount of time that they spend on their applications and platforms and social media. And that's a major problem with how everything is structured. So it's each of us users are unable to really uh, uh, put value on our time online. So where we're coming at it from a Web3 angle is that we're starting to build things differently, where mm -hmm. the whole premise is to build for the users and to provide value from, to the users from the ground up, um, wealth for all, uh, whether that's monetary wealth or just uh, of value create your individual identity and brand. So uh, that's where the, it comes into the mm -hmm. difference between what's on the current web and where we're going with Web3. Mm -hmm. Because I suppose the whole Web 2.0 business model really is, you know, capturing attention, engagement, keeping you on the site. And, you know, you get rewards for that with social media. Maybe it's an audience, maybe it's a following. But I'm very mm -hmm. interested in with Web3, you know, how... How much more is that going to benefit, you know, the users and companies? Is it going to be like you own a stake in this kind of platform or whatever it is? I wonder, could you expand on that a bit? Because it's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, you brought up a good point about the, the current structure of the web. Uh, the, it's the business advertising mm -hmm. model. It's the social yeah. media model with these al algorithms that keep you on on these devices as long as possible. And that's where the value mm -hmm. lies. It's not about... Um, how can we make this best for the users? It's about providing mm -hmm. something free that, yeah. uh, you know, it's easy enough to get on board. The user experience is good. So there's no, there's no downside there, but yeah. there's no value going back to the user. So in Web3, there's, there's a few key elements that are different. Uh, mm -hmm. It starts with identity, identity and login. That's, that's the first thing that we're going to see in this transition is yeah. users start to understand that, that username that they have on each of these platforms is not theirs. It's owned by Facebook. It's owned by Twitter. It's owned by others. And if a larger entity or more important, important individual comes along, they can uh, gain access to that. Um, or if the, you, you do things that you know may not be to the liking of the powers that be, um, you lose that username and you lose all that history and time that's been spent on yeah. these platforms. So um, login's the the first thing that we're going to see. Uh, you see that with the Ethereum name service. Uh, you see that with Elastos building out things with decentralized identifiers where mm -hmm. immediately you can have your own username and login that's yours. Mm -hmm. You own that completely. It's it's developed from the blockchain and that you can go and use that on multiple platforms. You don't have to create a new username and login on every platform and then have to be subject to, um, to, to their development. So um, that's the first thing. Beyond that, you're going to see um, community, community and access. So <clears throat> once you have your, sorry, <clears throat> once you have your username and your login, 
um, you can join these communities. And in these communities, you can build on that identity, uh, your verifiable credentials, these credentials that continue to add value to your ID online. Um, you can start mm -hmm. to have value with that. You do have ownership and you do have your login, you do have your community, mm -hmm. and you can take that with you on every platform. So that's the beauty of it. And that's where things are going to be a lot different. Yeah, that's really interesting. Even the first part about identity, I know there's kind of a thing going on at the moment with Meta and the person that owned the Metaverse handle on, I think it was on Facebook or on Instagram or something. And mm -hmm. the issues around, well, I mean, technically you don't own that. That can just be, you know, you don't really have any rights to it, I suppose, which is something that'll change. And I, yeah, in terms of like posting on it, like if you're a content creator, you know, the things that you post there aren't necessarily yours. They kind of you lose ownership mm -hmm. of them. So that's really exciting about Web3 that that's kind of like, I struggle to even imagine what that would be like because the world's so, I don't know, we're so used to this Web 2.0 kind of world. Um, yes. But yeah, yeah. Sorry, if you want to comment on that, I don't know if there's any thoughts coming up, but. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what people are going to mm -hmm. start to see. Like I said, whenever you're talking mm -hmm. about identity, that's the first step. You need to understand that yeah. uh, you can actually own that and you can move that around with you and take your data mm -hmm. and, and all your credentials with you. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. But like you said about, uh, as an example, a brand uh, that has the followers or an influencer that's has spent all their time. Mm -hmm. This is their company, their business, their brand yeah. about uh, yeah. putting value around that name. Uh, and then mm. growing up their, their community. Bootstrapping a community is extremely difficult. And you're doing it on these platforms where you ultimately do not have complete control. So having a brand like that or uh, anything as like you know, an athlete, an athlete and the fans, mm -hmm. um, the companies yeah. and their employees, all these are communities that, uh, that need to have control that's, that's shared amongst the users. And that's what we're getting at. And as an example, uh, Tomb Technologies, our company, we have a platform that's called Profile, profile.site, S-I-T-E. And we're, we're building out this, uh, this framework using Elastis technology for the identity component, the credentials, assigning all that to the users. But then once you're on there, you can start to do things. You can start to add in all these credentials and these verifications and these badges and things that build on top of your ID bringing in these different elements from the, the social platforms that you use now, and then adding in new mm -hmm. elements from Web3. And then you can come together as communities. You can monetize this. You can have, have governance. You could do really cool things. So um, building out platforms and seeing more things like that is how people are going to start mm -hmm. to understand how this all works. And that seems like a clear winner, to be honest. I mean, compared to the current model, if you can have the same functionality at some point and actually the ownership like i mean who isn't going to want to have that that seems essential yeah. but um and exactly. yeah so i mean and i want to add i want to add a little bit more onto yep. that actually sweet, uh, sweet. one thing mm. that people are seeing a lot about now is nfts and the utility yep. around nfts is going to continue to get more and more interesting so um mm. <clears throat> right now you know it's a it's a jpeg or an image that you own and a lot of people want this to go up in value and you have you build a community around it so that there's awareness around that nft collection but what can you do with yeah. it next and what's going to happen is the utility mm. where you start to transition to in real life uh use cases where you have access to mm. things in the real world uh and also mm. in the digital world and then also you want to have ways to communicate and get together um, to, with authentic people that actually have that NFT mm -hmm. collection, the, the same as you. So right mm -hmm. now, uh, these owners go on to Twitter and try and get together. Uh, they go on Discord, yep. same with DAOs. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a group, mm -hmm. you try and get a token or an NFT built around that and you come together. But like I said, on, pro, on platforms like Profile that we're building, it's actually done in a way that's automatic. So if you have a wallet connected and you have an NFT from a specific collection, you're granted access to that community. So you can come and go as you please. You can chat with other members that have the NFT. There's no need for verification from a third party. Mm -hmm. It's all happening on chain and it's all there. So there's value in that because you'll want to be together with these other like-minded individuals that truly are who they say they are. And that's one mm -hmm. use case. And then there's others where there's really cool use cases coming out mm -hmm. around, um, like I said, the in real life, if you want to have access yep. to events, uh, to private clubs, uh, the list goes on and this can be done with NFTs in a really cool way. Mm -hmm. We've done that recently with the enter the metaverse event where, I mean, you get an attendee NFT, but it unlocks specific discounts. It unlocks a discord server and it allows you into kind of 
different rooms basically and we're going to build on it mm-hmm. with each one and kind of add more functionality i think we're just kind of seeing the start of the possibilities of the whole thing um which yeah. i can't really conceive of where it's going to go but it's yeah really interesting to watch like um to see it kind of happening but yeah turn into the web 3 conference that's happening 26th of january to the 27th and 2022 um and so you're talking on donnie what are you speaking about is it the same stuff uh time saving yeah, well, it's, it's going to be around the uh, idea mm-hmm. of time and then understanding yeah. that your time is spent online and there's a lot of time and value that you think that you are yeah. getting out of the current web. And that's not true. Mm-hmm. And we need Web3 to be able to do that. And that's yeah. that's all around building up your identity, your credentials, your community, the ownership of what you're doing online. So there's there's, there's the current web, you know, you're getting things for free. Uh, The user experience is good. A lot of people and companies are benefiting from it, but it's not spread across to everyone. And it's not taking into account that being structured to empower the users. And we need to do that. And that's what we're talking about. And what I'll be talking about transitioning into this Web3. Man, brilliant topic, really. Um, And considering the fact that we're spending more time online than ever now, I think the average in the UK is like four hours a day. And I'm pretty sure most people are definitely over that. So um, really, really pertinent topic. The stats continue to go up. The social media Um, is more than half mm. the world. Uh, More and more people coming online. And, and, And we need to make this fair for everybody. We need to provide value to everybody. We all need to share in the network. And that's what we're doing. Amazing. So good to hear that somebody's actually working on that. <laughs> that's it. That's really, really uh, kind of relieving, I suppose. Yeah. And what message would you like people to leave with about Web3? You know, I guess we kind of touched on it a little bit there, but is there anything else you'd like to mm-hmm. add? I think that the message to leave with everybody is to to not hesitate into diving into mm-hmm. what's coming. Um, it's inevitable. This is where we're all moving And I think that by having more people involved, more people passionate about it, more people dabbling into this and getting into these communities and and helping out, it's going to help speed up the process because there is hesitations around change. But like I said, it's happening. It's being built for the users. It's to empower the individuals from the bottom up. So this is going to benefit everybody. And I think as more and more people get involved, then uh, it's going to be better for all of us and it'll happen quicker. Amazing. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time, Donnie. That's given me a lot to think about as well. And I look forward to seeing you at Web3. Yes, absolutely. Thank you.